This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, it's another fabulous day at Author You, your guide to book publishing. And with me, I have one of my old, old publishing pals. Um, and also someone who is so savvy, who is so smart about positioning when it not only comes to marketing, but with your mouth. And that Susan Rowan has been with us, as I said before. She has been named uh, by Forbes magazine as one of the top 25 networking experts to follow. And for a lot of us who know her, we call her the mingling mavian. So she leads a double life as a best-selling author. She's a sought-after entertaining keynote speaker who gives multi-generation audiences the required tools, practical techniques, and strategies they need to connect and communicate in today's global business world. That means we authors, all ages, all genres. And her groundbreaking book, which I'm always proud to say that I was the godmother to, <laughs> How to Work a Room, has sold over 1 million, that's 1 million real copies before the digital world ever came along. It was a featured selection, bestseller status of the Book of the Month Club. And she's also written Secrets of Savvy Networking and um, Face to Face. So with that said, I want to just kind of jump in because she does teach at NYU's Summer Publishing Institute for many, many years. And she calls herself a book doula. So she gets involved with the coaching side. But here's what I approached Susan on that with with the summer months coming and book signings, book events, craft shows, um, all kinds of activities where we authors are out and about um, that, you know, winners behind us, so to speak, that let's talk about some ways that we can start really prepping to have a stellar event, because the worst kind of event that you want to have is when you are sitting behind a table, hoping, praying everything that you can cross, that someone will stop and talk to you. And so what we want to do is to get into a variety of tips and techniques that you can do to really make your event, which, by the way, that at a book signing event, the average number of books are sold are four to six. You know, that's dismal. So we want to have you add like a zero after those numbers, at least. So you really have a successful outing. So, Susan, welcome back to Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing. Oh, it is my day. And you heard me chuckling, I hope. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And, and to this, I am going to make one correction. Instead of old, old, old friend, can we have all our listeners replace that in their mind oh. with long time friend? A, a, a long time an old friend. You are an old friend. You know, we, you know, it's not, it's not Susan that we're long in the tooth. It's because we have earned our wrinkles. Oh my gosh. That <laughs> is so true. We definitely have. But you know, I think some of my wrinkles and definitely the gray hair that I pay a fortune to get rid of actually has come from being a long time author in some of these very events. But if anything I can share will help our book people, our author you people, mm. learn from my mistakes mm. and some of the things that work for, for both of us, that will be wonderful because why reinvent the mistake wheel? Well, I, you know, sometimes we, some of us have to learn it over again. But <laughs> what yeah. we'd like you to do is to short circuit all this and to get into it. And also, Susan and I, and, and both of us, are very active in social media. And that and and multitaskers in those areas. So it it you do have to understand that a lot of what we do today is involved in social media. And there's and there's a lot of really screw ups both of us see 
repeatedly by authors and trying to promote their books, trying to connect with others. So we'll get into some of that, too, if that, if you're game for that, Susan. Oh, and not only that, I, I will say this. When it came time to do the Silver Anniversary edition mm-hmm. of How to Work a Room, I was told the reason that Harper invested the money in doing it was not just that the eight-page proposal I gave him. It was because of my social media awareness and involvement. If not, they would not have invested in me to do this. Well, you know, and that's so true because a lot of authors who still have the fantasy, to me it is a fantasy in most cases, of publishing with New York, um, that the criteria is going to be, so where are you on social media? What's your presence? What are you doing? Or are you going to hire somebody to get you up, to get you running, to expand you? Because that you have such a short window to try to hook an audience that if you're not using social media, you know, I think today you're in deep doo-doo. Oh, you definitely are. And I'm going to share this that um, because there's another side to it. We did a wonderful million author lab, I think it was about three years ago, mm-hmm. and we had two editors come over from New York, which they came over to um, near LaGuardia, so that was quite the trek. And they said that they have authors who have sold a million books who've never made a bestseller list. And they're very inclined for the authors who sell over time. And that's what all of our mm-hmm. author you people, this is your book. You can mm-hmm. sell it over time. You can continue to promote it. You can even have like a relaunch event because... This is within your control, but what you sell over time is more important than the flash of the pan that makes one list yeah. and then disappears. Well, the, and and that's where the term mid-list comes up. You know, these authors who have just staying power, they're there, they're there, they're there. And I know I've sold over a million books, but I've never been on a New York Times bestseller list. Neither have I. And... and but they're but they're out there, you know, and I and you just you keep plugging away, you keep plugging away. All right, so let's just jump into this. Let's talk about events, Susan. Okay. How does an author, in your opinion, your experience, prepare for an event? Well, I, I will. I'm going to say this in two ways. Every mm-hmm. event that I go to, I know that there are people there who may not be in a position to hire me to speak for a company or conference, but mm-hmm. everyone at an event is in a position to, if they don't need how to work a room or secrets of savvy networking, they know someone who does. So they're, they're a potential book buyer. But more mm-hmm. importantly, they're even part of your PR team. Oh, I met this person at an event who wrote this book about this. It sounded so interesting. So I think when we attend every event and keep that in mind, not make it your agenda, because when we have agendas walking into rooms, people can sense it, and it can be off-putting. <laughs> yeah, the radar is out. <laughs> oh, my. You know, it's like these singles events. I'm looking for the perfect match. Oh, my God, i got to run away from that person. So if you not go everywhere knowing, I have something, but you can't just go talking about your books. You have to have conversation that engages people on other common bonds. And this is where I would say every author, and I know I'm going to hit a button here, really needs to get good at some of that small talk. And it depends how we define small talk. But you could talk about hearings and wars and famine, and that's big talk, but nobody wants to hear that at an event when they've got a beverage in one hand. So talk about the things that are going on in the community, in the world, in sports, in movies, in books. And, you know, there's so many little things. You might find out that someone had a cousin that went to your university at the same time. There's a different relationship. So the first point is prepare for whatever event you're going to. And that Mm -hmm. could be even a wedding. That could be your nephew's graduation party. Prepare for it, prepare conversation, prepare your self-introduction, and also prepare some ways that you will allude 
to your book by way of conversation that doesn't look like you're a one-person dog and pony show. Mm -hmm. Here's an idea. You know, one of the hot movies this past week was Wonder Woman. Yay! Yeah. And um, you, you could you could be an event, and let's say you don't know a soul, um, and you could decide. I mean, you know I have sometimes been at events where I really didn't know anybody, and I will just kind of greet people at the door. Well, and that's brilliant. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I would just say hello and introduce myself. But I thought, well, you could just hook that into Wonder Woman and or Wonder Man. And, and you could introduce yourself, you know, hi, I'm Judith Bryles, and I'm an author. And one of my favorite movies this past week was Wonder Woman. And I'd love to hear about your Wonder Woman or your Wonder Man time. And, and, or, or something like that, that you could just, it'll throw them off, but then they could, it's a brag time for them. People like to brag. And you might pull out something that might be a really interesting tidbit to connect with them. Yes. And here, here's something that I would want to emphasize that you said. Judith acts like a host at every event. And that doesn't mean you're the person throwing the conference, et cetera. What that means is you become part, and I think, Judith, that's what I quoted you said in How to Work a Room, is you become part of the unofficial greeting committee. People are going to walk in, and I know this from How to Work Room. You know, 90% of us self-identify as shy, and now we have all the self-identified introverts. When people walk in alone, and even with someone else, if you do what Judith does and just go over, hello, I'm glad to see you here. Is this your first time? How long have you been there? Um, you know, I'm wondering about your Wonder Woman experience. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Did you read the comic book? Did you like Linda Carter back in the day? Yeah, I watched Linda Carter. <laughs> oh, see, me too. That's why I blew her in. That's, you have to be of a certain age for that. Uh, oh, yeah. See, now, now, yes, Linda Carter was hot. At least we all thought she was hot. I thought she had a cameo in the movie, but I'm not sure. But you see, what you did, and this is what you want to underscore as a takeaway, is be part of the unofficial greeting committee. Because mm -hmm. that way you'll get, get to meet everyone Absolutely. And people walk in that door and they're going, oh, my God, what am I going to say? And you come over and say hello. They will it's be relief. Grateful. They'll listen yeah. to what you have to say. Yeah, they will. All right, we're going to be right back. With us is Susan Rowan. And we're going to talk about how to turn any event into a stellar event for you and your book. For you. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Is there a book in you or another author you will show you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being good with? If you already have a book out, You'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has possessed Jazz, punch, and panache. Author U is for you. If you're a hobbyist or a casual author, it's not. Join Author U today through its website at authoru.org. Follow Author U on Twitter at Author U and on Facebook at Author U, where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily. Author U, where the author goes to become seriously successful. Impressions are everything in the world of book publishing. Whether your book is an ebook, a print version, or both, your book cover needs to pop, sizzle, and sparkle to immediately capture the attention of your audience. And your book's interior needs to be just as dynamic and reflect the professionalism your readers demand. Nick Selinger of NZ Graphics has won numerous national and international book awards for his cover designs and interior layouts. With over 20 years of experience in graphic design, he knows what it takes to create award-winning books and the many promotional pieces that authors need. 
such as posters, banners, postcards, one sheets, business cards, logos, and more. Visit ncgraphics.com and see what authors and publishers have to say about their award-winning books and how NZ Graphics can make your book the success it was meant to be. That's nzgraphics.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. With me is Susan Rowan, and we're talking about really making your events work so that the outcome is that you do shine and that you will sell books. But there's some some preliminary things that you need to do. And one of the things that she talks about is when you do introduce yourself, you keep it short. So how short are we talking, Susan? Well, if there's actually research, social science research, seven to nine seconds. It's wowza. That's a wowza. Yeah. And I found out why it's seven to nine seconds. I went back and okay. read my book. All right. uh-huh. the research oh, that's a good is, idea. The research is after nine seconds, it's considered a glare. It's considered a what? A glare. A so if you're meeting someone and you go on longer than nine seconds and you're having mm-hmm. eye contact and you do a 15-second spiel. Got it. Mm. Yeah. So seven to nine seconds. Now... Here's three tips for that. Well, you get the one. One is at seven to nine seconds. Your mm-hmm. self-introduction should also be geared to that specific event. If you're at a nonprofit, if you're at your book event, you should tailor what you have to say to the event. And then the third one is instead of giving a title, give the benefit of you, what you do, or your book. Then it gives the other person um, the opportunity to ask the first question, they think they've made the conversation, then they might ask you, what does that mean? Then you're invited to explain what the substance of your book is and why you wrote it, et cetera. So those right. are so that's, three that, tips, yeah. but seven yeah, and that's. I was going to say, I'm jumping in here. That's part of my then when you do that pause after that third little spiel about the benefit is that you do, is that that invites him into, you know, the the um, in the air, the tell me more. You know, they can come back and say, well, gee, so what do you do? How does that work? Makes yeah. it work. Yeah, and that, and it, because then you say something, but here's what you do. When you explain what you're doing, what you're doing, you don't take a long time. You take maybe a minute, and then you stop and turn to the other person, and this is how you invite them into the conversation. You say, and what about you? Mm-hmm. Then that exactly. Way Why are about. you here? Why yes. are you here? And then you're in a conversation. Then there's a connection. And then it can wind back to your book, wind back to writing, wind back to something that you want to talk about, but giving the other person the chance. And instead of saying, what do you do? Because a lot of people, what they do or where do they work is boring. And what about you? They can talk about hobbies, pets, uh, you know, personal interests where they volunteer. All of the above. All of the above. All right, so we you know we don't want to. I, I think it's a good idea not to show up at events if you're in a crummy mood, um, because people can feel it unless you can show up at the door when you walk in. Um, and it's that's not on our to do list to talk about. But I've been in a lot of events where the people, I mean, you can almost feel some negativity oozing around you. I mean, I'm sure you've been at those too, and you oh. wonder. Why are they there? And we all have met people that look like they've had, you know, you talk about acting sour grapes. They look like they've eaten sour grapes. <laughs> Their face is like, for those who ever saw Austin Powers, Miss Phobicina. I mean, you see that on their face. But I'm going to give you a little counterintuitive thought. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the person that looks 
shall we say, disengaged and ooh, sour grapey mm-hmm. face, <clears throat> that person may just, that may be just their face, and they may be very happy to be there. So don't avoid talking to them. Give them a chance. You may find that they may have just heard something that had to do with family but if you come over and talk to them, that they'll be very open to you. So that that's the, the difference. But we don't want to go anywhere where we have that face. We need to... No. I say this to people. Yeah. I got a fake smile. I put on that fake smile, and then I meet someone, and it becomes a real smile. Right. You, you can do that. So we want to... You know, we're, I'm just going to say it. You want to avoid a bitchy face. You just yeah, don't want to have... Say that. That's well said. Thank you. Um, that you you know is it soured down, and I think you really need to take a look at how you look in the mirror. You know when you interact with people and get some feedback, because sometimes people do um, don't they don't realize that they have an unfriendliness about them. And when you're meeting and greeting, you want to be friendly. I mean, it's really important. And as Susan says, sometimes you have to fake it till you make it. But you've got to have some kind of persona with these kind of events. And, there, and you know, this is work. By the way, this is work. This is not... Absolutely. Uh, I mean, it'd be fu- it's fun when it's play. But it is, it is always work. I know, and I had Susan uh, at last year's extravaganza. Susan was one of our keynote speakers. And that she knew I was really challenged. I mean, I was, my arm was shattered. I was drugged up. I was, you know, I hardly knew what was, I mean, I, I was running an event and by God, we pulled it off. Oh, but, great. you know, it, it was a challenge. I mean, it was a real challenge, but I had to fake it. Um, until I got, you know, I was surrounded by people who cared for me and, 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 and they were there to learn. And then I could transition into, uh, you know, that other, that other side that could really be the host, which is what I had to be. I had no choice. And you pulled it off. I mean, but everyone who knows you knows that you have the greatest smile and an amazing laugh. And you really did do it, and you were in pain. But I think I remember having to go to your room and put your earrings in for you. Yeah, you did. I, 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 did. I, I had people had to help me dress, all those things. All right, so we, we've got that. those three critical tips when you, you've got to um, um, really, seven, you've got seven to nine seconds to connect. You've got to figure out what benefit that you were going to ask um, for that and and you know wh- why you're there you know come come in there um, with those things all right so let let's talk about um, I, Susan I have been at so many events um, where I don't even know some of these people and all of a sudden I'm bombarded with their bookmarks and and all this other stuff and I don't even know if I want their bloody bookmark and I have to tell you a lot of times they all get tossed which is a shame. Well, you know what? This is so interesting because one of the things that I have said to, and I have said this for years, you walk in a room, you're bringing your, whether it's a book, a bookmark, uh, some people with the pens, um, I, I people sometimes go places with book proposals. There is nobody that oh, shows know. up. <laughs> Wait, there is nobody that shows up to an event saying, oh, good, I want to leave here with a bag full of stuff. This is not the time. It may be something you send as a follow-up to a conversation and may involve a stamp, but please don't don't send people books who don't want them. Don't give people books that don't ask for them. Or ask them, oh, I have a book. If you're interested, let me give you one. Or... But, you know, because I get people, as you do, mail me books that I didn't want that I'm not going to read. I've got bookmarks, the pens, and I think how I've said this, and I'd like to say it the best way I I know how, is do not shove your books and tchotchkes into people's hands and overburden them. It, yes, let them tell you what to do with them. It's it's like when I've told people when you're seeking reviews from people, you offer them options if they're open, 
do they want the book book? Do they want the when it's in in a book form? Do they want a digital form? Do they want um, uh, an emailed PDF, for example? Do they want it uh, printed out in manuscript and mailed to them? How do they want it? And it's always a recipient. And I remember, Susan, that I was a judge. I had been a judge for many years in the Colorado book competition. And they decided to do everything digital. And I said, I don't want it digital. I want the book. I said, I'm evaluating the cover. I'm looking at the interior. I want the book book. And they said, well, we gave the authors the option of how they, you know, they could receive it. And or they could, you know, submit it. And I said, well, that's not okay for me. The option should be the judge. And I think I think you got it backwards. So I was uninvited to judge. You know? <laughs> oh, now that's very interesting. Cause yeah. w- and this goes back to <clears throat> book marketing or any marketing. Mm-hmm. You have to give people the options because everyone consumes materials, et cetera, in a different way. Even in of the course. follow-up. I may be the person who picks up the phone. Someone else may be an e- email person. I may be the email person, but someone else prefers I just text them. We have to find out the ways that people want to get their information and their follow-up. That you said, hey, I want to see it. They should have valued that because you do. What you taught me was this word. You five cents a book. Mm -hmm. You touch the paper. Mm -hmm. I'm a a toucher. I'm not not a digital reader. I'm I'm on computers all day. I don't want to read books that way. Um, and I know that the stats just came out on audiobooks, 35, 34% jump again this past year. So now when you have people, they, you know, if you have an audiobook, they may like to listen to the audiobook. Give them options. Give them options. And so that would go back to the events, Susan. When you're in events, we have one minute to our next break here. But when you you go to events and people say, well, you know, I don't read. I like to have an ebook." You want to have some kind of a, a, a postcard or something that gives all the options with your book so that they know where to go to get it if they're not going to buy the hands-on book. And I, and I think authors miss the boat so many times. We'll comment on this. With me is Susan Rowan. She's the author of the multi, multi bestseller, How to Work a Room, which I recommend to everyone. We'll be right back. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Want to publish like a pro today? Well, then take a look at Ingram Spark, the only publishing platform that offers print and ebook services through a single source. Upload, edit, and manage titles all in one place. Take more control of printing costs with print on demand and reach even more readers through one of the world's most extensive distribution networks. Built by independent publishers for independent publishers, Ingram Spark has everything you need to maximize your book's potential. Color printing, ebook distribution, print on demand, global reach, and more. Start publishing with Ingram Spark today and see just how far your titles will go tomorrow. That's IngramSpark.com. Many of us have dreamed of writing a book. Some of us even have. Then the hard work starts. You'll need an editor. Who will design the cover or typeset the pages? Who will format the ebook? If you're a business owner, consultant, or coach with a serious message and expertise to share, the team of experts at 1106 Design can guide you through the maze. They've helped more than a thousand authors create top quality books and avoid the not so reputable self publishing companies. Learn more at 1106design.com. Then call Michelle at 602 602- 866-3226-1106-DESIGN. When Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972, they believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. 
They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing questions. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask coming up you'll hear more about statistics scenarios and strategies on what to do now to get you published so let's get back to the show and here again is your host dr judith briles so before we took the break we were talking about be, be savvy about pushing your stuff into basically stranger's hands. And, and it could maybe be someone you knew. But most people, when they go to events, that they're not planning on taking away a bunch of stuff. Now, the exception might be a trade show where they give you a bag when you come in and they expect you to, you know, go talk to different vendors and you pick up their stuff, their stuff, not necessarily your stuff, although you certainly should have a, a a card or a bookmark or whatever you do. But, I mean, you need to be smart and strategic on this kind of thing. And the other thing that Susan said <clears throat> that we, we really should address, because I, I brought up Audible as we went to the break, is the reality is that there's still a lot of people that listen to CDs. In fact, a lot of cars take CDs. And so one of the things that is very important for you as an author to realize is that you need to have a menu of offerings of what you have, whether it's a printed book, a digital book, an audio book, a CD. Um, I, you can step away from tapes, but that there are different options to have where people can buy their book. And if you're an event where you're only offering one, i.e. maybe a print version, maybe you have uh, some CDs, but you know what you could do is you could create postcards with a coupon code that could take them over to pick up and maybe get a discount on an audio type of book. And I know with Amazon's ACX that if they have never gotten, um, and this is a way you can get by a way a commission, understand this, on an audio book, that, and, and, no one, and they don't have to pay for it. If they are a first-time user of ACX, that a lot of times uh, they will have on it, they can get the book for free as a first-time gift. So, and you get paid as a commission. So that's just a little tip I'll just give you to run away with here. All right, Susan, let's go, let's come back to um, okay. some other things we can do. And one of the things that you and I have been really strong about since you and we, we've been publishing almost as I, what, when did your first book come out? What year was that? Uh, 28 and a half years ago. 28. And what, what year was that, Susan? I can't do the math. I think it was. 1000 BC. I'm not sure. No. <laughs> no okay. It, it was published in 1988, November. Okay. So my first book came out in 1981, and then 1983 was the, 84 was the second book, and then 87 had three more come out in the same year. Right. And then that's when I started to encourage you. And, and actually, the story how Susan started writing was that it, she was a good writer. She was a good writer, and she was a columnist. And she, she. This is before the times, uh, before blogs came about, where people now take a lot of blogs and put them together and make a book. 
Susan started it from her careers column, if I remember correctly. Is that right, oh. Susan? Well, let me tell the story. Judith okay. was kind enough to give a how to publish your book workshop for members of National Speakers Association. And back in the day, I cooked dinner, jumped and left it on the table for the ex, um, Jump! Well, he wasn't the ex at the time. Jumped in the car, drove down to Palo Alto, <laughs> and I got in a little bit late, but every one of us, 30 of us, showed up, and we drove from all over the Bay Area, furiously taking notes. And Judith Bryles held up one of my columns from the San Francisco Examiner. I co-designed the career series and said, Suze, you can really write. How to work a room should be a book. Oh, my God, I was just so flabbergasted. And then, Judith, you said the magic words, here's the name of my agent. And that's changed everything. So for those of you that are part of Author You, when Judith Bryle says, you can really write, it should be a book, trust me, listen to her. And (laughs) and now we have that we can um, be, we are our own small um, independent publishers, etc. There's so many options, but that was that was key. So I have always, in every edition of How to Work Room, I acknowledge acknowledge Judith as the godmother of the book. Yeah, and I and I and I wear that hat. I hear wear that hat with great pride. All right, let's talk about signing, Susan, because one of the things there's two things um, to do, and you know I do. I usually write in purple when I'm, I do my signing. And I, I'm a big believer in finding a color that works for you. It doesn't have to be any old ballpoint pen. And I think you're going to get into trouble because I'm going to give you a technique for all of you to help you out, especially when you have crowds. But also, I, I think it's a good idea to come up with kind of a standard type of signature um, that might tie in with your book. Um, Susan, do you have any thoughts yeah, about that? I do. First of all, I, when you say color, I just was at the um, Compass Bookstore, which is a book inks bookstore at uh, the airport mm-hmm. here in San Francisco, and they carried my book, and they gave me a pen to sign. I went, oh, I used to write with this pen. I loved it. And I spent two ninety five. great signing pen, the Le Pen, and it's in any color you want, and I chose a hot pink. And... You know what? Find the color, but the Le Pen is good. When they give you a Sharpie to sign, it has an odor. You don't want that. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. a ballpoint pen doesn't jump out. You want, because most of it's written in black ink, you want a color. So when they go, oh, it's signed, that they see the sign. What I do is, because of how to work a room, I'll write to Mary Mingling. And I put an exclamation point. And because I'm a former school teacher, I also make a happy face. <laughs> and then I sign my name. And mm-hmm. sometimes if I'm at a conference and they carry my books and I sign them, I say, the, well, what is it that you do? And then I listen. And if they say that, oh, I'm in insurance, I'll write to ensure that you blah, blah, blah. I try to personalize if you personalize based on what a person does or is interested in or has said to you, you will get a big smile. They aren't going to be giving your books away to the library because there's that connection. So I do do that. Savvy networking, it's to, you know, successful and savvy networking. Have it go back to the theme of your book. Mm-hmm. And my happy, smiley faces, just that's what I did and that's what I do. And maybe it's kiddish, but... You know, it's it works. <clears throat> it works. So let me just reiterate that, that you've got, you know, you've got a page. And I know that sometimes they, you know, they say go in on an inside page. I, if I have an end sheet, I'll use the end sheet because that gives me a whole freaking page to write on. That's one thing. And then the second thing is I've always used color pens. And the third side is that I always had, as Susan said, a standard signature that went with the theme of whatever that book was about. So that when I was with a big group of people, and this would help, secure, you know, really ensures the efficiency um, at events, especially with launch events when you have a lot of people, is that you can have them pre-sign. This is my hot tip here. 
pre-signed. So in Susan's cases, she was talking about, um, was it Mary Mingling you put, Susan, or Happy yeah, Mingling? Mary Mingling. Okay. Mary Mingling. She could put Mary Mingling with Susan Rowan in her happy face, but she's got room on top to put to Mary or to, to Jane or George or whatever. And if they have some other little tidbit she wants to put in, she can write that to repersonalize it. But some people say, you know, I just want the book because I'm going to give it as a gift. Fine, it's already signed. And what you can do then is make eyeball contact. Because when you're signing a lot of books, let me tell you, your head's down. You know, it's hard to have any interaction with them. And you've got people in line and you're sensitive to all that. So what you want to do is is have as much done ahead of time. And, and the reason why I want you to use the same pen where you get Susan's lay pen or you have another special pen, you buy a boatload of them or, or at least a dozen of them so that when you have signing, it, it's always the same color and you can pick it up. If you use any old ballpoint pen, I mean, it could be blue, but I'm telling you, there are 50 shades of blue. If it's black, <laughs> there are 50 shades of black. I'm telling you, find what you want and stick with it. And then you just always carry them with them. And so part of our traveling kit always included a couple of my extra, you know, purple signing pens that I always had. And 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 I would sit, when we would sit up our tables, I would be starting to pre-sign. So they were done. If I was away from the table and someone came up and bought it and someone else was handling it, they have the signature with it. I just didn't Welcome have their personal name on it. Paranormal Radio on the Lessons in Joyful Living. So that's what I would suggest. All right. That sounds that sounds like a great idea. That saves time. That saves huge amounts of time. Huge, huge amounts of time. All right. So what we've got going on here is that so other things that we want to take a look at um, that I wanted to jump into. Let's, it's, let's just get into um, the, the whole area of trade shows, Susan. And what I, I need to do is get a timing of when our next break is. So if Karina okay. will just so buzz that right over now. to me. I, I think we're going to get real. We've got 30 seconds. So here's where I want to go. I want to get all of you into trade shows, conferences, and exhibits because there's some special techniques that you can do. Plus, there is a lot of information that will put you right on top of what's going on in the community. And there's one newspaper you should always be reading to put you, make you savvy. We'll be right back. Author You, your guide to book publishing. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing, and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need The Book Shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd if you want to create a book with no regrets. Give her a call today, 303-885-2207. That's 303-885-2207 or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, Bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at My Book Shepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd.
One of the most important decisions you will ever make is your choice for printing your book. You are choosing a company which will be responsible for guiding you through the process and printing your book at a level of quality and detail that embraces your personal and creative needs. You want to choose a company that when your book finally arrives, you are delighted and ready to move on to the next level and one that is customer focused. Choose King Printing Company and Addy Books to be that company that brings you to the next level. Go to kingprinting.com or call 978-458-2345 and ask for Tom Campbell. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years' experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR, perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types including side sewing we provide warehousing kitting distribution inventory management a new print on demand facility streaming browser based ebooks and bookstore call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project you can also visit our website at www.tps1.com welcome back to your guide to book publishing Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, in our final segment, I also wanted to come back and pick up a few more tips from Susan on what to do with library signings, as well as some bookstore signings, and how to enhance them to be the magnet of people who are casually into the store, or maybe came in to find one particular book, and how to kind of bring them to you. So, Susan, you got some tips? Well, what I've done, this is what I've done personally, and it was at a couple of different larger bookstores is I asked if it would be helpful if I made the announcement in the bookstore. I did it at Barnes & Noble on Fifth Avenue, the one in Skokie. You guys will find some of the book event people in charge are not the people that feel comfortable speaking into a microphone, period. And I have made my own announcements in a number of bookstores. I love that idea. In, because who's going to be more enthusiastic about come to hear me, learn these tips. But I had it planned, and I kind of said it out loud in my mind. And if you can alleviate from the person that's uncomfortable, do that. They may say to you, no, that's not our policy. Then you say, oh, well, I just wanted to be sure that I helped any way I could. But I have been given that microphone where I've made announcements. So that's number one. Number two, if you do an event, please don't buy all your books on Amazon. Have a relationship with your local bookstore. Independent bookstores are increasing. This is really wonderful news, probably mm -hmm. because of borders going under. But have a relationship with your local bookstore. They want to support local authors. Even if you are doing the publishing, if they can bring people into their bookstore because you have a list and you have friends and they have friends and you have coworkers, they will be happy to host an event but don't call it a book signing. Call it a book launch party. What I did is I went to Trader Joe's, spent 25 bucks, and got water and chips and crackers and cookies and vegetables and cheese. And if you were gluten-free, you were out of luck. But you could eat your vegetables out of your hands. And I turned everything into an event, brought little tablecloths. Why? Because people like going to an event. They don't like going to a book signing. So I think you can work with the book event coordinator. Um, then libraries, too. Libraries are now become a real community meeting place. So mm -hmm. you can go to your local library and talk to people and set something up. They want to bring people into the library. 
This would not mm-hmm. be the place that you'd give away, a, you know, a free book. And here's the other thing. If your library's a little reluctant, you could say, I'll bring someone in to help with the sales, and what we'll do is we'll donate 10% of the sales to the library so you could buy books that you want for your you know, for the community. It might be a science book for kids. Who knows? But that's another way to entice people. Plus, there well, are other yeah, venues. what you also should do for libraries is donate a couple of books yes. uh, to, oh, to their idea. collection. And, and they call it a collection, by the way, everyone. So donate a couple to the collection. But do offer to give a percentage back. And they actually don't want to do sales. They're, they're not set up really to do sales on that. So you do have someone who handles that for you. Um, and and take that in, but you can you libraries can be great events, and they have actually wide, often very wide spaces to work within. Um, so you can have something because I've been in some bookstores that are really cramped, um, and you you can't do it. But I love the idea of making the announcements. Um, so have something, and and so this is where you want to have it fun, and and and, and bring really bring it in. I think so it it becomes a home run. And they'll wander over. So meet me over in aisle three or whatever it is. Exactly. Here's the other thing you want to do is you want to do when you know you have scheduled something, what you want to do is start the promotion out. Send a hold the date to the people that Mm -hmm. you're letting know about the event Mm -hmm. so that they have it on their calendar immediately. Um, Mm -hmm. To me, it just makes sense. You have friends, you have neighbors, you have family, your kids have friends, they've got parents. There are more people you know that would want to support you than you even imagine. So having a really good sense of who that wide cast a net a wide net network is is really important. But you get them, they will come to the library, they'll come to the bookstore, and maybe there's some other venues. Maybe it's your local, you know, church or temple or maybe it's maybe it's a um service club maybe if you're part of the rotary that's what you want to do you want to have everybody that can host you and host an event and what's great about the service clubs is you already have a built-in audience because they have to show up every week well and the other thing is that we we so often fail to grasp and understand the power of the ask you have to ask. So one of the places that I'm always going to, I've, I've done this with many of my clients, is that it's you just go back to who do you know who? All right. So especially those who have clients that they work with. So what clients really love you? Or what really, what friends do you have who really do have open homes? And, and you don't need little boxy places or they have a great backyard. Um, or a front yard. I mean, you know, I remember the movie where they were roasting the pig in the front yard. I mean, really. You can, you can, you can, I'm, I'm willing to try anything. But but that, that would be willing to host it. And, and they invite all their friends. You invite their friends. You're the star. You're the star of it. And, and have a great time. So, Susan, what about some tidbits on, um, on uh, trade shows and those kind of things? Well, very often there are exhibit halls that will give you a space if you're mm-hmm. part of the, um, if you're speaking, et cetera. But when you're walking through a trade show, even if you are just attending, carry a copy or three of your book under your arms facing with the cover facing out. I yes. did that for years. I would walk, you would think I was uh I had a child under my arm, but walk with the cover facing out. Even if they're people you don't talk to, visually, if they see it here once and then they see it somewhere else, you give them information, and we're now very visual. So walk everywhere with your book. Um, talk to people at trade shows. Talk to the people in the exhibit hall. They are people who know other people. Um, When I go to an exhibit hall, you know, make sure you have cards. But I think your idea of postcards Mm -hmm. is brilliant. Pre-printed postcards. But I would also say on those postcards, and we did it for both my face-to-face, how to reclaim the personal touch in a digital world and how to work a room, is we had three to five tips that people could use 
and implement at the time. So it wasn't just me promoting my book. It was something that was content that they could use. Exactly. And and although, you know, on those pre-cards, which I, I've always had, I would have them, you know, you have your cover on one side, and then on the other side, um, that you, you put them together and you have uh, pre-printed, make sure you put your by an address on them so they can get oh, returned please. if you're mailing yeah. them out, please. And that your your contact information, you don't need, well, we, we have a library campaign we're doing, so we have the ISB on it, but you don't usually need any of that stuff. It's obviously what the title of the book is. Um, and that you could have just a pre-written thing, but leave a space, if you can get a half inch or even an inch, where you could write a little personal note in the middle of it. Absolutely. And then you do the mail. Um, you'll find it very effective, very effective. So. Take advantage of this. And this is what I call no-brain marketing um, as you go out. And you can have those at this. Or you could, you, in your events, you could have them and you can write them a note. Make sure you call me about with whatever they're going to call you about. So when, if you're asking them, inviting them to contact you, um, that, that, that will help them and then they carry it away. And then also, let me talk about the ask again. If, if you have, if you're doing someone a favor, and they're calling to pick your brain for 15 minutes or whatever it is, or you're going to give them a lead, I would encourage them openly, said, don't forget to get a copy of my book and post a review. Um, and, and I, I, you know, I wouldn't be shy about that because you have a product. It's your book. You're in business. This is just an add-on. That's just a follow-up if you're offering extra services after you meet somebody. I don't know how you feel about that, Susan, but that's just where I come from. Oh, yes, and it's, but I, I had another thought about pricing, though. This isn't mm -hmm. my bailiwick, but I learned this from someone. When you go to price your book, when you are, let's say, selling at an exhibit hall, if you will price it at $20, here's what someone's told me, and you will say to people, don't worry, I take care of the sales tax. People go to the ATM, and they have a $20 bill. Mm -hmm. But if you add in the sales tax, then you're – because if they have cash, that's the best thing you want. Um, yes, you should have Square yeah. or one of those. Absolutely. Uh, yes, you should have that if, if they want to use a credit card. But if people pay cash, charging them $20 Make it easy. makes it easy for them, makes yeah. it easy for you. Absolutely, always. Well, I, I hate to say this, but we're actually out of time. So oh <laughs> with me is Susan Rowan. She's the author of one of my all-time favorite books, How to Work a Room. I want to encourage you to go get it. And you can follow her at Susan Rowan, R-O-A-N-E dot com. Follow her blog, get her newsletter, and subscribe. Pull down her free ebook, The Nuances of Business Networking. Susan, thank you so much for being with us today. And my pleasure. Thank you, Judith. All right, take care. Being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Each week.